Hello everybody, it is Ebontis, and my goal in this video is to cover the five starting archetypes or classes. Class is just an easier word to say, but archetypes. And the main reason I want to do this is so you have an idea of which one you pick, where you're going to begin. Now, when you get partially through the campaign, you'll get to a point where you can have a second archetype, and you'll get the benefits of both, except for the prime perk. So whatever's on your primary, you will get your prime perk. Your secondary, you're going to have everything else except the prime perk. So I'm going to go through the basics and you can kind of plan out maybe which ones you want to go for combining and see what you've got. So I'm on challenger on this character is where I'm going to start. And the reason I'll probably start here is this is kind of your up close guy. So a little risk risk reward. And then we'll kind of work our way between out and range. So challenger's main perk is when you receive fatal damage, when you're going to die, the challenger becomes invulnerable and gets about 50% health back. Now, it can only happen every 10 minutes and it will reset at a world stone. When you, you know checkpoint at a world stone you're also going to have the issue of um resetting all the enemies so you don't want to do that often but 10 minutes basically every 10 minutes it's get out of jail free card now i know some of these when you level them up like my challenger on my alt character is level 10 so when you get to that level this thing is actually 100 percent health so it is truly i'm back to full so it is really nice to level up but even when you're playing if you're playing on veteran for your first time through gonna have some struggles and probably some deaths this could save you occasionally if you're playing on surviving and you just get to that moment where you're almost beating a boss this could save you now there are some trade-offs and i'll kind of explain as we go skills are pretty legit though war stomp i do like this one because this class is based around being closer in proximity the weapons you get are going to kind of work that way you're going to be a little closer and what this does is a cone in front of you it sends out this wave of damage and it's actually quite effective because you can sit there so i mean if you have an alley of enemies coming at you and there's like three enemies coming up and you're like what do i do for one don't sleep on your melee on any character they're actually quite powerful uh but the other thing is use your disability to clear it a group of like mid-level or like low level ads it's actually really powerful now what you'll unlock later and this one's going to come at level five this is going to be juggernaut become nearly unstoppable gain three stacks of bulwark i need to find the definition for bulwark but I definitely know you become chunky or hard to kill. I just don't have the exact definition. I can't seem to track it down right now. 15% of increased movement and melee speed is increased and 50% increased melee damage. Stagger level reduced by one for you. And it lasts for 25 seconds. So if you get into a pinch and you kind of, you know, have a lot of stuff coming at you, kick that thing on and you're able to survive, be chunkier, melee faster, move faster. It's kind of your way to take care of what's near you and then probably get out of a bad situation. Finally, you got Rampage, if you want to lean into almost like a true warrior style. Increase your heightened state of battle, which gives you rate of fire and reload speed for 20 by 20% and movement speed by 10 for 10 seconds. Kills and dealing significant with damage, or significant damage grant one stack of rage, which increases range damage by 2.5% per stack. Upon reaching 10 stacks, the challenger goes berserk, which reloads their current firearm and doubles the Rampage effects for 15 seconds. So, got some pretty cool stuff going on here. Rampage is one of those that definitely takes some experimenting with, but it's pretty cool. For your perks, you've got 3.5% damage to all enemies within 10 meters. Again, that's why they're playing the close proximity. It's kind of what you're going to do. After ad activating a challenger skill, enemies within 10 meters deal 10% less damage for 15 seconds. So, if you do a shockwave and they still get to you, you're still they're going to be doing less damage. Power level lifter, so your encumbrance is going to be less, or your stamina cost increase for each weight bracket is reduced, which is nice. So this part here, like your base outfit is this guy, which is heavy. So 50% stamina cost penalty for the slow dodge, but if you change like one piece on this class is what I do recommend. You'll have the normal dodge, which is a bit more fluid and easy to work with. Uh, but this will actually help you be able to wear heavier armor, have better resistance, or an armor at least, and then your weight reduction, your weight bracket will be reduced, so you won't be quite as penal penalized. This is a nice thing to have as an alternate class too, just because you do get um, some nice benefits in there as well. Face of danger: using a relic within 10 meters of an enemy. So if you're in a pinch and you're trying to heal, you're gonna get two stacks of bulwark as well. It's the only thing I just can't find a definition of that. Uh, your base trait is gonna be strong back again, minus up to 10 encumbrance. So again, wearing that heavy armor. It would take this all the way down to 49. So you could wear this full set of armor, have your armor all the way up to 110, so your damage reduction is pretty solid, at least at this level. Definitely the way to go. So, I mean, your weapons, you've got a auto shotgun. So, I mean, if I sit here at mid-range, you're kind of effective at mid-range. 
but you're not perfect. This is about as far as you're probably going to want to hit. So a lot of what you're going to be doing is you're going to be a little closer up. Now, again, it is drum fed, so reload's not bad, but it is pretty slow. But you're going to be working with some close damage. So you got to know that you're going to be more comfortable, maybe need to be more comfortable with the dodges. And then you've got a pistol. This is going to be a little farther range if you need it. But again, it is a five shot little revolver here. Not the most forgiving if you miss like, you know, one or two of five shots. It takes a little while to bring it back up. So that is the challenger. Kind of closer range. A little more, you know, reliable at close range. Definitely powerful melees. But you've got the self-revive. So if you do want to, you know, early on buy a different weapon, have a bit more range and like switch out weapons but still have the benefits of the class, you can do that. And as you know, you're going to be able to get a second archetype later on, so you'll be able to combine this with a lot of things and maybe balance some things out. So that is Challenger. Next class we're going to have is the Medic. Now the Medic is obviously your healer. Good to have as part of a team, so if you're playing as a group, this is a great person to have as one of your teammates. Um, so you've got Regenerator as your prime perk. After restoring 350 total health to allies, could be you or others, regain a spent relic charge, which is really nice because you can actually get your relics back if you do healing to others. Resting or respawning at a world stone resets healing accumulation. Each additional player increases the healing requirement. So if you're playing by yourself, you gotta heal 350 total health points to be able to get one back. But as you've got options to heal, you are definitely going to have the possibility to get a Relic Charge back without touching World Stone. And eventually, if you just sat there and healed enough, possibly, you might not need the World Stones as much, which is less resetting of enemies. So this is kind of a, probably a very good team one to have. I haven't given it as much time, but I do still want to go through the perks and everything. Wellspring. This one's nice. All it is is the Medic Channel's healing into their fist, punching a hole in the ground, creating a 3 meter... meter Healing Spring, which restores 11 health per second and greatly increases Blight Decay. So if you have something that's like a debuff on you or something like that, it'll go away much faster. It lasts 15 seconds, and it's literally just like if you ever played Destiny. It's just a well. I mean, all you are standing in is a little healing zone, and you're going to get healing for 15 seconds. It's really nice, especially after a fight. Stand there for a second, heal up, you're good to go. Next, you've got Healing Shield. The minute quickly expels healing energy to shield all allies within 25 meters for 100% of their max health for 10 seconds. That's already big. That's a big shield. While shielded, allies regenerate 22% of their max health for the duration. So again, that's one of those where as you level things up, things might get a little bit stronger. But a full shield, get some health back, gives you time to survive, maybe use a relic to heal. Again, very, very good for a teammate to use. Um, this is like a very good like co-op person to have on your team. Finally, you've got Redemption. The Medic unleashes a 30 meter shockwave, way like literally 10 times. This is 3 meter. This is 30 meter. This is huge. Revives downed allies and restores 55% of max health over 10 seconds. For each additional one second holding the skill button, the heal gains an additional 55% up to 220% of max heal. Uh, revived allies will only receive 50% of the healing amount if revived allies cannot be revived again by redemption for another 180 seconds. Resets at world stone or on death. Cooldown is about two minutes. Uh, your perks are going to be grants 2.5% increase to all damage. So you just do more damage across the board. Benevolence increase relic efficacy by 15% and heals nearby allies for 30% of the total value healed. So... Your relic is 15% stronger than normal. So if this one right now does 70 health, you'll get a little bit more out of that one. And you're going to heal nearby allies for 30%. So everybody around you gets a little bonus. Increase the hits the medic can take before losing gray health. So your gray health is if you take a chunk, some of that can be earned half back. There's gray health, which is like half of the damage you take. And you're able to heal some of that back. So you have a better chance of surviving some of that. And then increase the relic use speed, which I can tell you some of the relics are slow to use. Definitely is one where it's I can see that coming into big play. And the triage for your trait, that's going to be the healing mod. It's going to be up to 50% increases healing. So huge for healers, definite benefit. Your weight's at 39%. Weapon choices, you've got a pistol, like literally looks like a basic pistol. But it is actually pretty accurate. Don't sleep on it. It's not the strongest thing in the world right now, but you got nine bullets, pretty well balanced. Or 
You've got 150 in the machine gun. Now you can see the range on the reticle. If I'm trying to be accurate from far away, it's gonna be a little bit harder until you lean in. Now you've gotta manage your overheating, but if you kind of pepper it slowly with little pulses, you can keep the accuracy pretty high, manage the, the actual like tightness of the reticle and the overheating. And then if you know you're at decent range and not too worried about the overheat, then you can just empty the whole clip. So it's a lot of bullets that you can fire out, not gonna be the strongest in the world. But again, if you're working as allies, help peppering enemies from like probably not the front per se. If you and a challenger are running together, you're not in the front. So this is gonna be something where you can play at medium range, help with peppering damage, help with heals, things of that nature. Soloing this class, probably gonna be a little like kind of slower pace of play. You'll be able to do some self heals, but I think this one will thrive better when it comes to a group. And you've got this just kind of like chain, kind of chain mailed mallet as a melee weapon. So that is your medic, probably best in a group. I know solo players could make it happen, but I think this one will thrive in a group for sure. All right, the next class we've got is the hunter archetype. And this one is going to be kind of your long range guy to some extent at least. So your prime perk is going to be dealing 65 base ranged weak spot damage, extends the duration of active hunter skills by two and a half seconds. Can extend the timer beyond its initial duration. So skills, for example, are gonna be increase the hunter's spatial awareness by casting an aura that automatically applies mark to all enemies within 35 meters, which is drastically large. Uh, while senses are heightened, hunter also gains 15% increased range and melee damage, lasts for 25 seconds. And again, mark, Crit chance uh, against marked enemies is increased by 15% for all allies. Then you've got Hunter Focus. Heightens the Hunter's senses, which causes aiming at an enemy for 0 0.01 seconds to apply marks. So basically just aim at them. Continuously aiming down sights uninterrupted and without shooting for one second causes the Hunter to enter a focused state. Focused reduces weapon spread, recoil, and sway by 75% and grants 25% ranged and ranged weak spot damage and 10% ranged crit chance. It lasts 20 seconds. So if you're doing big, if you're doing damage, you're going to be extending whatever skill you're on for a pretty good while. Hunter's Shroud is the last one. Hunters become shrouded, reducing enemy awareness and making them harder to hit while moving, attacking, or activating a mod or skill will instantly exit Shroud. Exiting Shroud applies mark to all enemies within 10 meters and grants ambush to the hunter for two seconds. Ambush increases range to melee damage by 50%, which diminishes over its duration. Range to melee attacks apply mark. Hunter will automatically shroud again after 1.15 seconds if no offensive actions are performed. So I'll show you guys kind of what just the skill looks like and also the dead to rights. So we know this one lasts 25 seconds. Uh, your traits are going to be gain 4% range damage and 1.5% weak spot damage. It increases with hunter level. Kills due to weak spot and critical hits increase ammo drops. Firearms gain 15% reload speed after a kill. And then using a relic extends the duration of any active hunter skill by 5 seconds. Effect degrades with each subsequent use. So if you use a skill over and over, it'll last. But again, like extending skills and keeping these things up seems to basically be the big thing about the hunter. Trait is long shot. It's going to be range bonus. And it says centimeters, but eventually you'll get up to like... Um, 600 centimeters, which is basically, I think, like, 6 meters. So you'll just be able to go farther effective with your weapons, depending, no matter what you use. So if you're enjoying ranged weapons, you can enjoy them a little more. Uh, the Huntmaster M1 Long Gun. This will be long-range weapon, 7 in the magazine. Kind of show you what that one looks like. Uh, and then you've got your Repeater Pistol, which is a nice thing to use. And I'll show you guys how that one feels. So we're going to come up here. And again, your melee yeah. weapon. Yeah. You've just got this kind of like steel sword, pretty basic standard stuff. So you can see bigger crits than we had before, pretty powerful shots. Uh, reload speed's gonna be there. And then we've also got the repeater pistol. As quickly as you can fire it, it's gonna pump out the bullets. And then we were talking about the skill here. So if you throw the skill on, you're gonna mark. Higher crit chances. And again, I can't mark these guys specifically, but that's the idea is your mark would be available. And you can see that, like actually it is actually counting them. Okay, just for some reason I've seen it look different in game, but you'll notice down below as you do damage, 
I'm sitting there just increasing the timer. It's up to 37 seconds. It's longer than it ever started. So this thing is just going to be active as long as you're in battle, which is a really nice way to kind of keep your skills active and be able to be effective for as long as you can. I can even reload, take a second, grab some ammo here. And then every time you do a chunk of damage that's more than 65, you're just always going to have that skill active. So this is the idea of like, Working at long range, figuring out what skill works best for you, and knowing it's going to be there consistently. And then as long as you keep hitting, it's just going to be able to be up for a long time. Take breaks between combat, it'll come back. But, I mean, if I just literally have 15% uh, increased range and melee damage for an indefinite amount of time, that's kind of awesome. As you saw, the weapons, you've got ranged and your repeater pistol. Weight's going to be in the normal dodge, so pretty standard stuff here. So this is the Hunter. If you want to play at some range and then use your pistol as a backup, it is probably your most middle-of-the-road guy to start off with. And then if you're comfortable with some long-range accuracy shots, you can definitely get some benefits out of those. So that is your Hunter. Final class we've got is the Handler. And as you can see, comes with your good boy, the Doggo. And taking a look at this guy, character is going to start off with weights pretty low. So you're going to be armor also on the lower end. You've got a long gun, kind of an AR-47-38 in the magazine. This is actually what I used for a very long time. Pretty efficient. And then you've got your Tech-22 handgun, 30 in the magazine, just kind of sprays bullets. Uh, it plays well with certain mods and modifiers and stuff like that. So for the archetype, your prime perk is going to be when the handler is down, the companion will attempt to revive them at 50% of max health. Can be used to revive allies with command. Downed ally must have a relic charge. So you need a relic charge to be healed by an ally. Doesn't say that specifically for you, but the dog is truly holding one of the relics, so I still think it uses it for you. Um, this is one of those that the dog can go down sometimes, like can be like incapacitated while you're in battle. If the dog is down, you are kind of stuck. That is where the trade-off of the challenger is, you know, a benefit of, it's gonna be there every 10 minutes though. This is every two minutes, so it's gonna be much more frequent. But the benefit to your dog is you can send it out and it's going to be, I can't do it because I'm in like ally territory, but if I'm up here on the range, it'll probably show you have another target. So if you're playing as a solo player, it gives you the ability to have in the enemies attack something besides you, which I cannot tell you how often helpful that is. You can basically point him to go out a certain direction. Again, I'm in the ward, so I can't do that. But you can have him just run out in front, take the attacks, and then you sitting back here, you can sit here just unload weapons from far away while he's taking damage. Then by the time some of the stuff actually realizes what's going on, then, you know, the dog's already put in some work on him. You've got range. Again, this is a good solo class, and it's one I played for quite a while as a solo player. And having just another target, having the dog take the initial attack, and you've got some parts where it can do threat, it's actually really going to help a solo player out. So it's definitely one to consider. Challenger is going to be a completely different playstyle, but the self-revive, also really good for a solo player in case you get in a pinch. Now, skills, you've got Guard Dog. Companion will follow the handle. So you're not going to have a skill that you activate and does anything. It's all based around the dog. Companion will follow the handler and continuously heal allies within three and a half meters for a little bit of health. And then if you press a single press, it will engage enemies. Double press, it'll have it come back to the handler. And then if you hold it down... Uh, you're going to grant 2% of max health per second and 25% increased movement speed to all allies within 20 meters. That's the support. Or sorry. I misread that one. Sorry. So the guard dog companion will follow the handler and generate 15% increased threat while attacking. All damage to them is reduced by 20%. So they all work the same way. Single press, the dog will go out to like where you point it to. Double tap, you'll bring it back. And then you'll have a hold, which will kind of do a specific function of the dog. So the hold on the guard dog, the howl reduces damage by 15% to allies within 20 meters, and the companion generates additional threat. So this is the guard, the defense, the threat, almost like, not a tank, because he's not that strong, but that's the idea, is kind of your tank, pulling aggro, that kind of thing. Then you've got the heal, the support dog, as I said. So if it follows you around, it's just going to slowly heal you while you're out of combat. It really is a nice way to just not have to use any potions or anything to get back up, or relics, I should say. To get back up in health, eventually the dog will heal you. It's slow, but it will eventually get there. And then, again, if you're out of combat or even in it, you can have the howl happen, and it will do 2% of max health per second and 25% increased movement speed that lasts for 25 seconds. So it's going to get you half of your health back, and it's just a free skill that you can use, you know, every minute and a half, basically. Finally, you've got attack. Companion will follow the handler and deal 20% additional damage. Uh, if you hold it down, it increases damage 
for all allies within 20 meters. So it is definitely, it is good. You have a pet, you have a summon that you can use and summons, you know, there's other stuff we'll get to. You'll find that stuff later. But the companion will be a really nice thing to take the aggro off of you. And also the self revive, definitely helpful in a pinch. Uh, you've got Pack Hunter, gain 3% range and skill damage while the companion is active within 25 meters. Uh, Spirit of the Wolf, increase movement speed by 10%. All allies uh, within 10 meters of the handler gain the handler's movement speed. So again, remember it's 1, 2, 3, and 4 for your levels. Teamwork, handler and companion gain 15% increased revive speed. So you're a little faster there. And using a relic fully restores the companion's health. So if you use one, you heal your buddy too. Your trait is going to be Kinship, reduces friendly fire damage dealt and received by 8%. There is some friendly fire damage in this game, so be aware of that. So that is the Handler. I am saving this one to last because it is kind of a pre-order bonus. You will be able to play through the campaign, talk to one of the NPCs. I'm not going to spoil how you get it, but not too terrible. Eventually, you'll be able to get this character if you don't get it as a pre-order bonus as an option. Gunslinger is exactly what you would imagine. So loaded is your prime perk. When activating any gunslinger skill, both weapons are instantly reloaded and gain infinite reserve ammo on all weapons for five seconds. So it's all about basically staying in the action and high, you know, gun usage. First skill is going to be quick draw. Pull out your trusty side piece and unload up to six critical shots from the hip. Each shot deals 35 base damage and doubles the stagger value. Press, again, instantly fires towards all enemies in view within 25 meters. Upon release, rounds will be divided evenly among targets. Hold and release allows manual aim and fires one single powerful shot upon release, which is pretty legit. Now, you've also got um, Sidewinder. So, calls upon the power of the Desert Sidewinder Snake to increase ADS movement speed and draw speed by 50%. Cycling weapons will automatically reload incoming firearms last 12 seconds. So faster movement speed, faster AD, like ADS movement speed and draw and swap speed, and you got 12 seconds. So if you unload one weapon, switch to the other, it's automatically loaded. Unload that one, switch back, keep going as much as you can in that time frame. Bullet Storm unleashes the full power and speed of Gunslinger, increases fire rate by 20%, reload by 50% for all ranged weapons for 20 seconds. Single shot weapons become fully automatic. Kills instantly reload the current weapon, that's insane. Uh, instead of becoming fully automatic, bows and crossbows gain 15% critical chance and 50% increased projectile speed. Definitely a good thing for, like, crossbow I've used. The projectile speed would be nice. Um, so, again, if you are leaning into the weapons, this is where your fun will lie. Your trait is going to be ammo reserve, so up to 50% ammo reserves. That'll be a nice thing. So you have, like, longer exploration sessions, maybe a good thing to mess around with. So Swift Shot, you've got gain 1.5% uh, fire rate and 2.5% range damage. And this increases with Gunslinger level, so you'll unlock it early and just level it up. Uh, posse Up, ammo pickups award 20% of additional ammo per player with the bonus split equally among teammates. Quick Hands, firearms gain 10% reload speed. That's just nice to have all the time. And then using the Relic reloads the equipped firearm. So if you heal, you're going to reload. Pretty nice, honestly. So for your character, you're going to start out with like 39 normal dodge. You know, you can see the outfit you've got. You're going to start with uh, the Wrangler, which is a long gun. Actually has a pretty good feel to it. And you're also going to have the Western Classic. It's going to be kind of your actual six shooter. Melee weapon is this just kind of like hatchet thing. Again, the big swing we were hitting before was like 109, 110 on the other one. So this is going to be hitting a little weaker, but a little quicker attack speed, a little more nimble. Just so you guys can see the melees. So we'll start with the six shooter. It is a fast six shot. And again, the reload's not too bad. This is why this is your gunslinger. He is all about shooting the weapons. And then for your marksman, I always got to get that thing off of there. I mean, it's pretty easy to hit the shots. You're going to be pretty consistent at range. Pretty decent. Now I'm on mouse and keyboard in case you're wondering, but overall hitting your crits gonna be a lot more reasonable on this one than that shotgun also working at range gonna be able to do a lot of work on things farther away and then your six shooter will work either like this we just spray or i'll give it a minute and try and let the other one come back up that's the general idea of the gunslinger is it is leaning into this so again like as i level up my ammo reserves will go up a little bit my swift shot will get there um you've got a normal dodge 
pretty standard stuff. That's just the way your armor is going to be set up. I played this guy for like five minutes and got a couple of rings. I'm trying to let it charge up just so I can show you guys more what the charging ability is like. I have used the full charge where you hold it down and aim it. It hits big. Like my on a crit, I'm hitting 115, 55 to the body. When I aim this right here, that was an actual critical. But I've seen it hit for like 300. So it is definitely one really powerful shot. That was a critical critical, like an ultra critical basically. Um... That was a really good one. So that's the gist of your gunslinger. That is your pre-order guy. But, I mean, you can put in some work for range if you want to be safer. Even the six-shooter still hits pretty well from far away. And again, if you want to pump out the shots fast, they go pretty quick. So that is your gunslinger. That is your pre-order. Or, you got to work through some other stuff if you don't pre-order it. You can get it, though, if you don't pre-order. So don't worry about that. So that wraps up all the classes in the game. Remember, the gunslinger is either pre-order or something you can unlock by, you know... There's guides out there. I don't want to spoil it right now in case you pre-ordered or in case you just want to go figure it out on your own. But all the classes have a little bit of give and take to them, depending on their weapons and their abilities and powers and skills. If you're a solo player, Challenger is going to be up close, but you've got the self five. The handler for the dog is going to be good. If you're in a team, you know, the medic is going to be a really nice thing to have. The hunter is going to be good for buffing. And the gunslinger is just going to be able to do damage all the time. So if you just want to go guns blazing, have fun with that one. Hopefully you guys found this video beneficial. If you did, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you got questions, thoughts, opinions, or if you're just enjoying the game. And if you haven't seen my review for Remnant, check it out if you're curious if the game's worth it. Because I definitely think so. Rated it very high. Check that video out as well. You can find me on Twitch or Twitter. Or if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.